Let's do a, another example, uh, in this case a second order differential equation. We're going to follow the same steps that you saw before. We're going to solve for the homogeneous solution and remember we said that we're going to ignore the right hand side, set it to zero, and for the characteristic equation we have a second uh, derivative of x, so we'll write s squared for that. Here we have a uh, single derivative, so we'll write 1s, and then we have zero derivative, so we'll just write 2 times uh, s to the 0, or 1, is equal to 0. There's our characteristic equation. You can use the quadratic formula or other methods, but uh, I happen to already know that this factors into s plus 1 times s plus 2 is equal to 0, which means that s is equal to minus 1 and minus 2. There are two solutions. Maybe I'll use the subscript 1 and 2 for our two solutions, minus 1 and minus 2. That means our homogeneous solution is going to be equal to a1, a constant, times e to the s1t plus a2 e to the s2t. And uh, I'm going to plug in the s1 and s2, so we end up with e to the negative 1t plus a2 e to the negative 2t, where, if you recall, a1 and a2 are unknown for now. We don't want to solve for those until we've actually found the particular solution and added that in. Again, we have a particular solution for an input that's constant, we're going to have a, a constant waveform, so we're going to start with a particular solution which is just going to be a constant C. What happens when we plug that in? We get XP double dot plus 3XP dot plus 2XP is equal to 2 for time greater than or equal to 0, and luckily for a constant, a lot of these things drop out. So what we end up with is just xp is equal to 1. Here's the general solution. Homogeneous and particular parts together. That's our x of t. Then the homogeneous, we already found. a1 e to the negative 1t plus a2 e to the negative 2t plus 1 there's our solution, where we still are wondering what a1 and a2 are equal to, and again, we use the initial conditions to solve for that. Here we actually have two initial conditions, and we have two things to solve for, so we have the information available. So, when we plug in the initial conditions, x of 0 is going to be a1 e to the negative 1 times 0, plus a2 e to the negative 2 times 0 plus 1, and that all has to be equal to the initial condition that's given, uh, 0. And then uh, notice that we have some terms that drop away, so a1 plus a2 plus 1 equals 0. So that's one initial condition. The other initial condition was the derivative where I'm going to very quickly find the derivative of our uh, differential, of our homogeneous part. Uh, that's just going to be negative 1 a1 e to the negative 1 times 0 plus negative 2 a2 e to the negative 2 times 0, and then the derivative of 1 is just 0. So this also has to be equal to 0, which yields negative a1 minus 2a2 is equal to 0. This happens to be in a form that's relatively easy to work with to solve for both of these because I can just add these two equations together and notice that immediately I got rid of a1, uh, so I'm just left with negative a2 plus 1 is equal to 0, meaning that a2 is equal to 1. Then I can plug that back in and I realize that a1 
has to be equal to negative 2. So now I have my uh, overall solution, x of t is equal to uh, a1, negative 2, e to the negative 1t, plus a2, 1, times e to the negative 2t, uh, plus our particular solution, which was equal to 1. And this is for t greater than or equal to 0. Again, we can plug in the initial conditions. For example, if we were interested in x of 0, uh, we would see that if you plug in times 0, you get negative 2 plus 1. In other words, ne minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's good news. We can check that off. And then we can also look at the derivative x dot of 0. Uh, again, I'm going to very quickly evaluate the derivative in my head. Basically, we have to take this minus 1 and multiply by minus 2. So we end up with 2. And then we have this minus 2 that we multiply by 1. We get minus 2. The 1 has 0 derivative, so we end up with 0. And again, we can congratulate ourselves that everything uh, works. And then uh, what I haven't done here, mainly because we're just out of space, is I can also check by plugging in uh, into the original differential equation uh, uh, to check the full solution. I'm not going to show that, but that is our second example of how to solve a second-order differential equation.